Okay, thank you everybody and then hello Japan. So we are the delegations from China and actually the rest of the, the half hour a week probably going to talk to you more and then related to you know, future China innovations. So first of all, let me introduce myself and then actually I'm working for the company called Innoway and it is the startup trade in China. And it's originally from like, you know, the first one comes to the 45 incubators and accelerators in one street, which is only 200 meters. So we are the, really the, you can say, the heart of the startups and the innovation ecosystem of China. And um, people call us, you know, the Chinese version of Silicon Valley. Um, but I think we do some, probably something different. And also to be my owners, you know, uh, present, you know, our delegations. Uh, be honestly, even in China, it's pretty hard to actually meet them, and they are really, each single of them, really big, you know, shots and, and uh, big guys in uh, different field. So, if you honestly, we actually bring you the like a small version of you know the entire entire ecosystem ecosystem of innovation in China. So let me introduce one by one, and um, yeah, maybe from that one first, Mr. Alan Zhou. He's the partner of Garage Coffee. Garage Coffee is the first garage, uh, first actually the startups coffee shop in China. So he facing you know, the, his company is facing the entire uh, you know, the park of, of the innovation in China back to actually seven years ago. Uh, once you talk about the innovation in, chi in China seven years ago, probably no m most of the people doesn't know VC, most of the people doesn't know startups and uh, innovation. But now it's really getting popular, and uh, his company facing the whole process. And then uh, <coughs> Mr. Zhang, Joe Zhang, he's the, actually the CSO, Chief Strategy uh, Officer of Your Work. Your Work is the, the largest uh, co-working space in China. So probably he will introduce you a little bit more about it. And by the way, uh, he also has the other title. Uh, he, back to 10 years ago, he's the assistant of Jack Ma. Does anybody know Jack Ma? The, the president or, or the CEO of Alibaba. So he been actually worked with Jack Ma side on side four years. So whatever people Jack Ma face, and he will be the top person also talking with. And also we got uh, Mr. Yu, Mr. Yu Chen. He is the, uh, <coughs> the president, president of uh, ePay. ePay is one of the leading uh, e-commerce you know, payment system in China. Which is like a platform and then providing the, uh, the strong and also the ecosystem of the payment system, and also he's the uh, uh, the entrepreneur of this unicorn companies also, and also Mr. Zhang, uh, he's the <coughs> the person in charge of the innovation of uh, Guan. Guan is the one of the largest the company in China. I'm not quite sure if we know Guan pretty much, but if you play the you know, soccer, so you call it football, you probably know Guan team, so which is the Beijing Guan, you know, football team. So that's actually invested by, by his own company. So he's the person in charge of the innovation of the, you know, large corporations. So we can actually, you know, side by side from each angle telling you something about China. So next in probably 25 minutes, and you're going to actually got a brief story about what's going on in China in the, in the field of the innovation, and uh, what will you, what you probably got the opportunity you have. Okay, let's you know, probably introduce one by one, maybe from uh, uh, Mr. Alan Joe first, and le let's see actually briefly introduce our, your, yourself and also your company, oh. give them you know, some hey, say hi. <laughs> okay, hi, good afternoon, Slush Tokyo. Uh, you guys are doing good out there? I see some pretty happy faces, I guess it's been doing well today. Um, so Garage Cafe, Toku Cafe, is uh, one of the first, um, uh, I would say, privately operated incubator in China. We started on InnoA, where uh, Tim is uh, uh, very instrumental in helping to grow the, uh, the uh, entrepreneurial and uh, innovation space in, in China. Um, we started as a coffee shop, 800 square meters, uh, in a second story of a undescriptive building with a three-star uh, hotel, uh, you know, in the building. Um, 
And the reason for, this, for the, uh, the start of this uh, meeting space or incubation space was to allow investors to meet up with, with entrepreneurs and startups. That was the reason why it got started. Uh, Beijing's a big city, just like Tokyo. And if you had to run around the whole city looking for startups, it'll take you a long time. So the idea was, uh, uh, you know, seven partners decided that, well, instead of having us uh, all run around Beijing looking for good projects to invest in, we'll just open up a coffee shop and individuals who have great ideas can come in and talk to us and look for uh, funding. So that's how it started. So the, uh, the, 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 uh, the fundamentals of what we did at that time uh, in 2011 was very simple. Uh, but now it's getting more complex, obviously, so you'll hear more from, from my colleagues here on the panel. But I still believe that innovation and entrepreneurship is about grassroots uh, organizing. It's about the fundamentals of great ideas. So we have to keep that fire burning or else, and, and I, 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 you know, before uh, the panel, I walked around yesterday, I did some meetings in, uh, in the city. I think we have the same issues. There aren't enough startup teams and entrepreneurs out there. Now, we started uh, in 2011. Uh, by the time we really got going, maybe there were just a handful of locations like ours around China where you can come in and meet investors, talk to experts, uh, uh, attend events. Now, after a, a major policy uh, directive from the State Council of China starting in April of 2015, we went from about 50 incubation space privately operated to 4,300 uh, today. So that's the type of skill that we're looking at. But what I mentioned before is that we ought to look at the fundamentals, what make these spaces run, which the, the drivers of the business that we're in, in terms of entrepreneurship innovation, are the startup teams. So the, so the I guess the pain point that we have right now for, uh, for all of China in terms of our business of entrepreneurship and innovation is to encourage uh, more people to get involved with the uh, the innovation business. Great, great. Thank you, Alan. So uh, actually, Alan is uh, based on the incubator, you know, incubator business model, and uh, we got actually uh, George Zhang. He's actually running the co-working space, the largest one in China, and they are competing. Uh, actually, we work now the premium probably worldwide nowadays, and so probably from the like, uh, uh, we got we work people. <laughs> Probably, you know, from your angle, cool. and as a worker working space, and uh, you also, you know, serving the like, you know, small and medium-sized business. What do you think? And uh, also, you know, giving introduce about you know your company. Yeah, thanks, team. Uh, glad you give some brief introduction so I can save my time. Uh, hi, Tokyo, and hi, Slash. It's my honor to be here. Uh, it's my second time in Slash. I've been to Slash Beijing, and I love the atmosphere. Uh, something about your work. Your work is also a new company, less than two years. We have now covered 24 cities in China, 24 major cities in China. We have uh, 66 co-working space that are, uh, you know, roughly covering all the innovation center of different regions in China. So last year, by the end of last year, we start our global, going global strategy. We have now 40, four cities abroad, uh, namely Singapore, London, New York, and Taipei. So by the end of uh, last year, we have uh, 1,800 <coughs> startups within the U-Work system. And we estimate by the end of this year, this figure might double, reach to uh, 3,500. And the latest valuation of U-Work is uh, 7 billion RMB, slightly higher than uh, 1 billion US dollars. So we are now uh, like a tiny unicorn. Okay. Uh, let's actually uh, bring the third one, uh, <coughs> Mr. Yu. Actually, his company is already typical unicorns in China. Maybe he give you a shot about you know how could be the entrepreneur running uh, you know unicorns in China. 
Sure, thanks, uh, team. Uh, hello, everyone. Again, my name is Chen Yu. Very excited to be here. Uh, so I'm the co-founder and uh, president of ePay. Uh, again, we are one of the leading uh, payment service providers in China. Uh, and I'm sure many of you have heard about Alipay and uh, Tenpay and WeChat payments. Uh, because, uh, you know, Alipay and WeChat payment, they're more uh, consumer oriented. They, they focus more on the front end. Uh, whereas ePay, we focus more on providing the back end integrated solutions for merchant customers. Uh, last year, we processed about one trillion RMB in total transaction volume. So that's about 150 billion US dollars. Uh, and we have uh, branch offices across 30 cities in, uh, in China. Uh, and in addition to uh, ePay, I am also an uh, independent board director to uh, Jiangsu Bank, which is one of the uh, largest provincial banks uh, in China. So I'm more or less in the fintech industry. Uh, the other thing I did, uh, the other thing I do is that I uh, co-founded a nonprofit initiative uh, called the Internet Van. And our mission is really to uh, promote uh, internet adoption in the traditional sectors in China. So, so far we have already done uh, six tours uh, in six seasons uh, in more than 30 cities across China and more than 20,000 uh, entrepreneurs have participated in our programs. Uh, and a few years ago I also participated in this 10-part uh, feature, doc feature documentary called Internet Age uh, produced by the Central Television uh, China Central Television, uh, in which I actually uh, interviewed a lot of the uh, internet pioneers and tech leaders across the world, across the world, m mostly in Silicon Valley, uh, including guys like Vin Cerf, uh, Bob Taylor, uh, Larry Roberts, and also a lot of tech tech leaders like Mark Zuckerberg, Elon Musk, and Peter Thiel. So it's a very uh, exciting learning experience uh, for me. Uh, which I also want to share with a lot of the entrepreneurs in China. So uh, a couple years ago, I also wrote a book called Into, Into the Future, based on the interviews I did uh, for this feature documentary. Uh, so I'm actively involved in a lot of the uh, kind of the internet and technology evangelism uh, to promote uh, startups and entrepreneurship in China. How about Ms. Zhang? And uh, you know, just you know, as a large corporations in China uh, and uh, still doing the innovations, what actually the idea and what are you doing now? Thank you, team. Uh, so exciting to be here. Uh, Tokyo's large and uh, panel talk. Uh, firstly, I, I, I think I want to introduce uh, uh, our company, Guan Maker Investment Investment Company, uh, and Guan Guan Investment uh, Company. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, was established by, uh, in uh, 2015, and uh, uh, the, yes, excuse me, uh, was established in 2015, and the business is for uh, service and investment for startups. And uh, uh, it, w it was established by Guan City Guan Group, and the city group is one of the biggest group in China. Uh, let me, uh, I, I think uh, in last year it was ranked as uh, number one, 156 uh, in Fortune 500. And the city Guan group is the biggest uh, industrial company in city group. Uh, and the scale of uh, total, total asset uh, it's about uh, 30 billion US dollar. Uh, and the business uh, concern uh, like uh, uh, telecom and uh, cable TV and uh, mm, new energy media and sports just now a uh, team introduced. Uh, I think some of uh, Japanese friends know about uh, Beijing Guan uh, football club is the most famous and uh, one of the biggest uh, football club in China. Uh, but I think w uh, why why Guan Group uh, establish Guan Maker? I think I think it's the I think it's the strategy of uh, corporate uh, corporate transformation uh, because now Guan Group is in the process uh, of uh, corporate transformation. Uh, uh, just now, I, I said uh, the, the company, the uh, main business is about uh, just now telecom, uh, but 
now a uh, Guan maker, a uh, Guan group engaged in many new areas uh, such as uh, virtual reality, uh, 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 construct, uh, build, build technology, and uh, some like uh, uh, new media and some uh, new 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 te new technical ne new new technology. Uh, I think uh, because in the process of transformation, Guan Group need a company, uh, need a company to find to find excellent startups and new technology uh, to help the. Uh, help the group to uh, get more uh, new information and new power uh, to uh, transform. So I think uh, Guan Maker uh, play a very important uh, role in the process of Guan, Guan Group's uh, transformation. Thank you. Okay, that's <coughs> great. So we got one more round, and um, probably each person three minutes, and give you probably some specific topic because things we are in China, uh, sorry, in Japan, and uh, even through the morning topic, and then people always talk about China. I heard about it, and then uh, also the other stage. Also, people mention 500 people over there and mention about China. Also, the question, you know, regarding about China. So I don't really quite sure. People, uh, you guys, you know, going to be scared or you seek, you seen the like an you know, opportunity or what? But you know, Japan is like you know really big country, and just beside of China, and then. We always, you know, so like a long term, you know, history that we always had to find uh, like a collaboration model. Uh, that's why we are here and uh, open uh, like a um, vision in the mind and see what we can do together. Typically in the, in the field of the innovation, we see so many like a tourist, the Chinese tourists buying stuff and, 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 and so many Japanese entrepreneurs come to China. But be honestly, uh, I haven't seen any single of like a startups company from China here. And then very seldom to see also startups company from Japan to, ch to China as well. I saw Korean one, I saw so many different, but you know, but we should actually have more interactive. That's why we're here. And then give you some like a, what do we call it? Like a dry powder, which is, you know, like, you know, some concrete, you know, solid stuff. And those people are really hard to meet, you know, typically, you know, in China and then regarding about any issues. So maybe, you know, probably once again, introduce a little bit more. Uh, and then how about, you know, as you the first one, uh, first, you know, coffee shop, you know, in China, open the door for, you know, uh, innovation. What do you saw? And then typically the history, you know, from like an innovation of China and been through a couple of years. Uh, what do you think, you know, what you can, you know, suggest for the Japanese here as well? I, I think any country that is serious about being competitive economically, you, you, you've got to have technology and innovation. That's, uh, I think that's an overall a consensus for, um, you know, in any country. China is for sure, um, you know, from, from the time that I've been involved with uh, innovation, that it, it's, a, it's a fast take up, but it also in, a, in some ways it's not fast because it's a huge country. Um, I do believe that now, with, uh, with a, a tremendous amount of guidance, uh, uh, not only from the government side, but also uh, engagement in terms of Chinese students who, who, who matriculate overseas. Uh, each year, there are 320,000 students that go to U.S. to go to college and, and you know, go to uh, 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 education, uh, you know, get their education. Uh, 120,000 to UK. So I think that there's a, a lot of skill set and, and knowledge that's being brought back to China. Um, to, to Tim's point, I think that, uh, so China is a believer. I think Chinese, China is a true believer in innovation. So that's a good thing. We're all on the same page. But with what Tim um, said before, um, you know, what, what's coming, what will be the challenge coming up for China? I think is, it is about engagement. I do believe that we don't interact enough. Here at, at Tokyo Slush, I think, uh, Slush Tokyo, I think we get a chance to meet each other. But, you know, we're hardcore guys. I, I just want to, you know, be honest. We're very hardcore innovator, uh, drivers, dreamers. We want to make sure the same ideas and the same enthusiasm filters down to everybody. This is the age of innovation. And, and I don't think that you, you, whether you're from Tokyo, you're from 
uh, Beijing or, or from London, we are on the same page. So let's open up the floodgates a little bit more, guys, and let more people come in and, and participate, okay? Great, great. Thank you, Alan. How about, yeah, Josh, uh, what do you think about? At the very beginning, actually, team introduced uh, your work like the pioneer co-working space in China. But actually, uh, we are now in the process of transforming from a co-working space to a like uh, innovation okay. platform. Because yeah. now we have co-working, yeah. we have incubator, and we, sell, uh, we have accelerator. Yeah. Uh, in our research, actually, we realized one thing. For this particular Chinese generation, their view of startup is global. It's not only China, it's not only Beijing, Shanghai, or Shenzhen. Their first office in, might be in Beijing, and second might be right immediately in Silicon Valley or in New York or in London. So what we do is you work go first. We go to those hot cities that, you know, Chinese startups, they're willing to go. We set the stop first. We set up the office. We set up the ecosystem. We get connected to local media or even government. And then you guys come. Yeah. Very familiar space, very well-known environment and everything. You just start your business right away. You don't have to waste your time in doing, you know, all those admin works or, or networking before business. Okay. So that's, that's our, you know, positioning now. We are looking like a hub. Yeah. So right now we have this go global strategy. We encourage young Chinese startups to go abroad with the, you know, speed of your work. Yeah. And also we have this go China program. We encourage those startups overseas to China. We have a well-established network for your work because we you know, cover major Chinese cities and we have those ecosystems, we have national policy support. So we encourage young entrepreneurs from overseas, including Tokyo, Japan, yeah. to China to enjoy this you know, huge market and well-educated customers you know, to, to enjoy this. So your work is just like a hub. We do you know, go in and go out thing. Yeah, great. So you're providing the services. And then that's a, also the fact, you know, so many startups company also actually going abroad from China to different countries. I'll give you an example, like, you know, Uber actually was doing a great job a couple of years in China, but actually merged by DD. But next step of DD is actually go abroad. So they actually fight back. And they're going to be probably next day in, uh, in, in Japan as well. So same, uh, I'm not sure if people saw that like an OFO, the yellow, you know, self-driving, you know, uh, bicycle. Uh, it's also go abroad as well. So yeah, this happened. Okay, um, how about you? And how about the payment system? What you can actually do for that? Uh, I, I think, first of all, I, I want to agree with Alan. Uh, I mean, I think he's right in one thing that innovation is definitely the consensus worldwide. Uh, when it comes to payment, especially mobile payment, I think China leads the market, uh, you know, in the world. Uh, if you look at the mobile, mobile payment penetration, is actually much higher in China than it is in the U.S. I think, ironically, one of the reasons is that is exactly because the legacy payment system is not well established in China. Uh, like the credit card penetration is not uh, very high compared to the U.S. So this allows China to kind of leapfrog. Uh, when it comes to mobile payments. Uh, the, other, the other aspect about China's market is that, uh, interestingly enough, you know, size does matter, right? If you look at the user interface in China, at the end of 2016, uh, there are over 680 million internet users in China. It's almost twice the uh, entire U.S. population. And top of the seven, uh, seven out of the top 20 uh, tech companies in terms of valuation are actually Chinese companies, right? So when you have a market that this big, when you have a you know, market with you know, such diversity, uh, innovations are bound to happen. I think 10 years ago when people talked about uh, innovations in China, there's this term C2C, it means copy to China, right? Because almost every, every internet com company in China was like a copycat. All the negative US company. opinions. Right. Yeah. Uh, but now you begin to see, uh, you know, copy from China, right? There are, there are innovations coming out from, uh, out from China. Uh, we begin to see companies like Facebook is actually copying features from WeChat, right? So I think down the road, uh, one, of the biggest challenge, uh, one of the biggest challenges for uh, Chinese tech companies is really to, uh, you know, export our innovations to the rest of the world. I see. Mm. Great. 
Okay, last three minutes for Ms. Zhang. And uh, typically, you know, in China, so many large co corporations looking for innovations. Uh, but honestly, the economic in China is kind of getting slowed down. Uh, large corporations, either, you know, export or whatever, looking for the, you know, it, either internal or external innovation. It's a huge opportunity. Like, you know, Rocket Space got invested by uh, Hainan, Ireland. I think 3. Point something, 3.4 billion uh, US dollars. And there's actually more coming. I saw, you know, last half years, I saw like, you know, YC people, CEO coming over, Idea Labs, you know, founder Bill Gross, and then uh, I'm gonna meet, you know, Dave, uh, the 500 startup founder tomorrow, and it's, uh, same thing, you know, big collaborations, you know, opportunities, open door for, you know, worldwide. And actually, typically for, for Ms. Chang, you are, you are actually still on process for yeah. like, you know, in transforming from, from large corporation doing innovation, what they actually got. Uh, thank you, Tim. I think uh, Guam Maker is a very good example. And uh, uh, Guam, Maker, uh, Guam Maker is a channel between big company and uh, the market in, in innovation. And uh, uh, now, uh, more than 100 startups uh, have, been, uh, have become to our member of Guam Maker. And some of them, have been received received our service in finance, industry, uh, and uh, uh, service, and uh, some of them has has been invested and uh, uh, in, and acquired by Guan Group. So uh, I think we identify startups uh, not only from the view of uh, investment, but also from uh, industry. Now we are planning, uh, we are planning uh, uh, to build a platform. The platform is for, uh, I think, it, uh, because uh, we have many, like, uh, many resource um, and uh, uh, many, like, service uh, system uh, in, in our grand, grand group. So we want to, uh, I think, the, the uh, physical space is always limited. So we want to uh, move our the uh, excellent resource, uh, move them to uh, move move them to internet, and make a, a online platform. I think uh, maybe in uh, in the near future, uh, as a maker, uh, you can use our uh, online platform. Uh, for example, uh, use our uh, our cloud organization uh, system. Uh, will will uh, this this system uh, will uh, match the different uh, the suitable coworker to achieve the uh, business goal uh, and uh, our uh, space sharing system will provide like uh, provide uh, room uh, space uh, pro provide office uh, and the meeting space. Uh, for the uh, small business, and uh, our service system will provide uh, many professional services such as uh, law, uh, tax, and uh, uh, human resource, and the other uh, in our online system. So I think uh, we can, a small business uh, uh, will uh, use our platform to reduce their uh, cost in business, in office, business travel, uh, in hire, and we also want to apply the um, some new technology, uh, such as uh, virtual reality, blockchain, uh, to make office behavior uh, more convenient and safer. So I think uh, Guam Maker uh, plays a very important uh, role in this whole system. As I think for Japan, for Japan, uh, I know the big power of Japanese in innovation uh, and in uh, creation. So I think maybe some of you have the same uh, idea with us as us. Uh, so I think maybe we can make it happen together. I think in the nowadays, in nowadays, anything is possible. For sure. Last but not least, and then uh, I know probably some of you got a question, but since that stage is very limited for five people, 
And so if, if you got the questions, we're going to be on the side and you can meet us. And otherwise, we'll see you in China. Okay? <laughs> Thank you.